Tonight, winter weather draws near after parts of Minnesota woke, woke up to snow today. Dave is tracking a system that could hit the Northland this weekend. And staying afloat after talks of closing two prisons in our area, a short-term funding source will keep them open for now. Plus, a final push. Candidates for an open county board seat are urging voters to hit the polls as the election inches closer. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. Minnesota has seen a brief glimpse of winter-like conditions today with snowflakes falling hard in some areas. Yeah, here's a look at the big white flakes coming down in Richfield, a similar sight in South Minneapolis. Bizarre to see the snow with the fall colors all around it, but this is Minnesota after all, and we are no <laughs> strangers to a little snow. Yeah, not even kind of, not even fall colors there. There's still quite a bit of green left in some of this video. From Alexandria to Minneapolis, many people saw this snow. They posted it all over social media and just aware about everywhere else you can imagine. And our meteorologist Dave Anderson joins us now to discuss these snowy conditions. Dave, we could see some of this start to arrive over the weekend, huh? A little bit more because our neck of the woods woke up to a little bit of that fresh action this morning as well. But some places like Sedan say that's old hat. They're still <laughs> holding on to last year's snow. <laughs> Let's take a look at this picture which comes courtesy of the St. Louis County Rescue Squad. I assume that they do repelling training in the old uh, pits of the Sedan mine. And at the bottom, yeah, last year's snow is still lurking. And by tomorrow afternoon there could be a fresh one to three inches up in that neck of the woods as our low pressure system lurks off to the west and looms on our horizon to set us up for a 90 percent chance for a rain snow mix on saturday we already have the cooler air in place so the low will help bring up lift and the result will be a bit of snow indeed our weekend forecast says saturday's the day that gets this snow chance tonight will build up towards mostly cloudy and by sunday already it will return to partly cloudy how much snow are we going to get I don't think it's going to be huge amounts, but up north around Sudan and places like that, it could be higher totals in other parts of our, our territory. And we'll show you that chart in more detail in just a few more minutes. Thanks, Dave. Minnesota's $1.9 billion bonding bill includes some critical funding to keep two Northland prisons afloat for at least another year. In August, the State Corrections Department announced a budget shortfall would force the Willow River and Togo locations to close. But $7.5 million could be their lifeline, at least for now. CBS 3's Emma Quinn spoke with legislators about what this means for two communities. This was just a few short months ago when a group rallied outside the Togo prison after it was expected to be closed by the Department of Corrections along with the Willow River prison. But for some good news for those who rallied, the prison and the jobs are expected to be saved. The bonding bill passed Thursday gave the Department of Corrections $7.5 million to keep the two facilities up and running. It should keep them going for another year. Department of Correction officials say the prison's challenge incarceration programs, which are housed in Togo and Willow River, have been effective to many who've been incarcerated in the smaller facilities. Northland legislators say being able to keep the facilities afloat for now will help keep dozens of jobs and means inmates won't have to be moved to other facilities. The fact that we were able to keep those jobs whole and keep those people uh, intact is, is, is really, really satisfying. Department of Correction officials say the budget crisis was a department-wide issue. Since the facilities were smaller, they were chosen to close. Officials in Willow River and Togo said they are pleased with the announcement as it means residents can keep their jobs, especially during the pandemic. Again, this funding should get the prisons through the next year. And coming up tonight, we'll hear from the commissioner of the Department of Corrections on how this funding will impact the two prisons in the future. Remote learning can be tiring for students as they're looking at a computer screen for the majority of the day. The Lake Superior National uh, Esterin Research Reserve is hoping to change that and keep students energized with the St. Louis River Field School. The free program will be held once a month on Wisconsin Point. and will focus on STEM-related activities from canoeing to looking at water samples during the winter and sand dunes. Reserve leaders say it is one way to help students during a trying time. Research has shown that it's important for kids to be out in nature. It's good for their attention, it's good for their uh, physical and emotional development, and that's all the more important during these times. The program is for any student from 6th to 8th grade. For more information on how you can sign up, you can head on over to our website. 
Today, Minnesota posted its highest single-day COVID-19 case total since the pandemic began. Nearly 2,300 new cases and 13 deaths were reported today. At 44,000, it's also the state's highest number of tests completed in one day. State data shows Minnesota's seven-day positivity rate remains around 5%. That's as of October 7th due to a lag in data. State officials say there are about 22 new COVID-19 cases per 100,000 residents, a number that has increased since late September. Meanwhile, Cook County is now one of only two counties in the entire state of Minnesota where the virus spread is low enough for in-person learning for all students. You'll remember the state's threshold for that is below 10 cases per 10,000 residents. The only other county is Kitson, which is in the northwest corner of the state. State health officials say statewide more than 500 schools had at least one positive case in the last two weeks. 24 public and private schools reported outbreaks with at least five positive cases. Grand Rapids High School is one of them. Medical professionals in Wisconsin are asking President Trump to reconsider his campaign rally tomorrow as COVID-19 cases across the state surge. Trump is expected to speak at the Janesville Airport, which is in the southern part of the state. Campaign officials say everyone will get their temperature checked and will be given masks and hand sanitizer. But Wisconsin health experts like Dr. Bob Friedland in, Was in La Crosse are worried that won't be enough. He called on Trump to cancel tomorrow's rally due to the state seeing record cases and hospitalization totals on Thursday. President Trump's rallies endanger public health and they have become platforms for him to spread medically inaccurate information that puts people's lives at risk right here in Wisconsin. President Trump had previously canceled his Janesville rally shortly before testing positive for COVID-19 himself about two weeks ago. Wisconsin set another record single day case total today with nearly 3,900 new cases. We reached out to the Trump campaign for their thoughts in a statement. They said they take strong precautions for their campaign events and reiterated that everyone will have temperature checks and be given a mask and will also have hand sanitizer. They said they'll also have signs instructing people to wear their masks. Congressman Pete Stauber cast his vote in Hermantown today. He is seeking his second term representing Minnesota's 8th district. If re-elected, he would become the first Republican to win re-election for the seat since 1944. He's being challenged by Democrat Quinn Nystrom. In her most recent quarterly fundraising report, Nystrom said her campaign has outraised Staubers by more than $140,000. When asked about that today, Stauber said he's focused squarely on his own campaign. We're sprinting to the finish line. I mean, we have a lot of things on the calendar. We're meeting as many voters as we can. My goal is to worry about how I do. I want to be able to meet as many people as I can. In a statement, Nystrom's campaign spokesperson said the numbers show she's organized a strong grassroots campaign, saying the numbers show, quote, while Pete Stauber continues to sell out to the highest bidder by taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from corporate PACs, Quinn Nystrom is building a grassroots movement that will unseat him in November. The two candidates competing for an open St. Louis County board seat are making a final push to Northland voters. Family programmer Ashley Grimm and business owner Joe McCor are the two choices to become the next county commissioner for District 3. In the August primary, Grimm earned 52% of the vote as McCor earned 30%. They both beat out Eric Urkela. If elected, Grimm tells us she'll focus on helping those who have been hit hard by the pandemic. She says hearing from residents about their struggles has shaped her current priorities. My top priorities are making sure we have strong public health initiatives, that we're supporting our frontline workers and still being able to, to meet the needs of families during this time. So we've had some great conversations and I'm excited to keep that up until the election. On the other side, McCord tells us during these difficult times, it's important for St. Louis County to focus on spending and the most critical functions of our government. Now is the time for stable, disciplined leadership, um, you know, support of our public safety officers, ensuring that we're holding the line on spending, I mean, at the same time, providing uninterrupted delivery of key services. To learn more about the candidates and where they stand on certain issues, you can click on our web story at cbs3duluth.com. Some Duluth business leaders say they don't want any trials connected to George Floyd's murder trial to be held in St. Louis County. Attorneys for all four former Minneapolis police officers charged in Floyd's death filed a motion to have their trials moved out of Hennepin County. Today, Greater Duluth Business Association leaders say they've started a petition asking the courts to keep these trials out of St. Louis County. The group is worried heavy media attention could spark protests 
In a statement, the Greater Duluth Business Association asked residents if that's a risk they're willing to take. We did reach out to St. Louis County Attorney Mark Rubin to learn more about the likelihood of the trial being moved to the region. We have not yet heard back. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, the Duluth Police are starting a new program to try and drive violent crimes down. We have the details after the break. Temperatures have been driven down. High temp 41 today is 11 degrees cooler than normal. And with the cooler temperatures, we'll be very supportive of the formation of snow for Saturday. We'll talk about how much your town could get coming up after our break. Live, local, CBS 3 News at 6 with Kristen Bucky, Anthony Matt, Kelly Hinson, and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live, local, CBS 3. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Bender Shoes Storewide Sale is going on now. Prime Appliance had hundreds of appliances on back order due to factory shutdowns. Then in one week, three truckloads showed up unexpectedly. So we decided truckload sale with overstock prices like this. Whirlpool 18 cubic foot smudge free stainless refrigerators, just $6.96. Or GE and Amana gas ranges starting at just $4.49. Financing always available. Have our pros deliver and install or take it home today. Prime Appliance, the best place to buy your appliances. Let us prove it to you. It isn't always easy living in the Northland. Up here, we have to count on our neighbors and let them know they can always count on us. I have the honor of serving our community in the State Assembly. Down there, I'm fighting to make health care more affordable and broadband more accessible. My opponent has other ideas. He wants to help companies like Foxconn give tax cuts and bailouts to billionaires, leaving us behind. I'm Beth Myers, and you can always count on me. Hey, you guys remember when we went on this trip? Yeah. Remember, Daddy, when you helped that nice lady across the street? Remember when you blew up those blue nails for that little kid's birthday party? That's how it's done. Remember when you helped fix the neighbor's satellite dish? <laughs> you think you can help people fight back against insurance companies? Yes, I can. <laughs> The Ski Hut is fully stocked with all of the downhill, cross-country, and snowboard gear and clothing you'll need this year. The Ski Hut has a huge selection of kids' skis and snowboards, featuring our season-long junior lease programs. Ski and snowboard gear will be in high demand this year, so don't miss out. Get to the Ski Hut today. We are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 7, Saturday, 9 to 5, and Sunday, 11 to 5. No appointments needed. Get to the Ski Hut for all your winter gear. Remove your spooky tree for free with Sawtooth Arbor Supply and Tree Care. Post your dead spooky tree photo on Facebook or Instagram. Grand prize is free spooky tree removal. For breaking stories that impact the Northland most, turn to CBS3. Catch Eye on Parenting every Thursday at 6 with me, Leanne Valdez, on CBS 3. When Jill got sick, you took care of her. You were such a rock star. You need to get your butt out of this house and start dating. Come on, guys, I can't date with everything that I have going on. You have nothing going on. Nothing at all. Zero. I'm not going to tell the girls. No, I can't lie to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do is lie to my kids. Drive them places and lie. I got your back. The Unicorn. New season coming soon to CBS. The Kelly Clarkson Show, right here. Weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Season 2 is the here. The Kelly Clarkson Show, weekdays at 3 on CBS 3. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth Weather Max forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, our snow chance is getting closer by the moment. Right now it's in the Dakotas, and it could be here by about 5 o'clock in the morning. And, you know, it's not a huge blizzard coming our way, but it could lead to a couple of inches of snow in northern Minnesota from the Iron Ranges to the Canadian border, and so that should make the road slippery 
and the Weather Service has then issued a winter weather advisory. The rest of the region likely will get a little bit of snow as well, just not quite as much. I'll show you how much in just a little bit when we fire up the map for snow totals, and then I'll also tell you that this snow chance goes away as early as Sunday, so it won't be here the entire weekend either. What we have here right now at the airport is a current temperature reading of 34 degrees with the humidity at 40 percent. Westerly winds running 7 miles per hour and our air pressure 29.96 thousand and fourteen millibars is pretty near textbook normal but those numbers should go down as clouds increase as our low pressure system gets closer to the region. Current temps in the Upper Peninsula run from 33 in Watersmeet to 35 in Ironwood. We have 36 to 38 degrees found here in northwestern Wisconsin on the cooler side Ashland on the warmer Hayward in between Superior. Moose Lake's also at 37 degrees and we have lower 30s here for much of the North Shore and even upper 20s once we get up the Gunflint Trail. Lower 30s for much of the Vermilion and Mesabi Iron Range and Borderlands around 30 as well. Low temps tonight are slated to slide into the 20s for just about everybody though lower 30s are vaguely possible clinging to the shores of Lake Superior. Temperatures that are cool enough for the formation of snow. And we'll talk more about that snow chance in just a tiny bit. But the here and now Doppler map shows not much happening as far as precip goes. That battle yesterday of the high advancing and the low departing has resulted now in the higher pressure winning out for maybe a matter of hours. Only hours because just a few hundred miles to the west, that next low pressure system with its snow is coming our way. Crossing the Dakotas now, and then it'll be into Minnesota and eventually Wisconsin and Michigan. Like I'm saying, probably happening around 5 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, starting with a 30% chance for a rain-snow mix, but becoming the 90% shot perhaps by 10 o'clock in the morning. But again, it should wrap up probably by uh, 8 to 10 o'clock tomorrow evening. And in this low-pressure system's wake, I think snow totals north of Duluth will run 1 to 3 inches, hence the winter weather advisory. And the rest of the region here, we're probably looking at a trace to about an inch. Now, the past couple of days, I was thinking that this snow may not stick. You know, it'll melt off right away. But with temperatures taking a bit of a dive, sticking around in the 30s for several days, this just might cling to the ground a little while well, a little bit more than I expected. Now, let's talk about the forecast. We begin with tonight in Minnesota with clouds on the increase and temperatures on the decrease. They'll run from 22 inland to 30 right by the lake. The westerly wind will go 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then for northern Wisconsin, upper peninsula of Michigan, clouds will increase there as well. And low temps will be in the middle 20s. For tomorrow, daytime high temps for Wisconsin and Michigan run a narrow range of 40 to 45 degrees. And the chance for that trace to an inch of snow there is about 90%. It is also 90% in Minnesota. East central Minnesota and the head of the lakes may not get that much, a trace to an inch. But north of Duluth, 1 to 3 is possible. And with the higher elevations of the North Shore, we might even push that just a little bit higher thanks to a little bit of lake influence. Wow. Oh. Almanac. That's not what I'm supposed to have here. Let's see if I can quickly call up the extended forecast, which seems to have disappeared on me here. Hopefully, Tony gives me just a little bit of time to put that up. Here it comes. Let's take a look at our seven-day forecast for the week ahead. And frankly, the temperatures are not going to be blazingly warm. They'll be in the 30s to lower 40s. And once we shake off this snow chance, Kristen and Anthony... We get Sunday and Monday off, but it could come back again for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Even if you hadn't been able to pull up the seven-day there, I was just going to say, well, Dave, it's just going to be too cold and too early for snow, and that's all we need to know, right? <laughs> that's one way to look at it all, yeah. right, Tony? Do I have to give you some of my paycheck now? I, I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll talk about all that right, after I'll the show. i a check for $1.29. <laughs> right, that works. Thanks, Dave. Tonight, the sister of a woman killed last month in a car crash in Brookston is speaking out about driving under the influence. You'll recall Melissa Kalinowski of Cromwell was killed when authorities say a cloquet man crossed over the center line. It happened on Highway 2 near Brookston on September 25th. The Minnesota State Patrol reports the man was under the influence of alcohol at the time. While the man has not been charged in this case yet, Minnesota court records show this wouldn't be the first time he's driven under the influence. He has had four previous DWI convictions in Minnesota between 1986 and 2010. The fact that he's already had four DWIs prior to this, something's wrong with our state and the laws. There is no possible way that he should have been driving. 
Kristen, who you just heard from there, is Melissa's younger sister. She says her sister was spunky, outgoing, and lived a carefree, happy life. The 42-year-old leaves behind her 15-year-old daughter and a longtime boyfriend. Melissa also, also, also survived breast cancer. Kristen says Melissa was also a wonderful aunt and loved every moment with her family. She was a loving mother and a great sister and a she was always checking in on our dad all the time, calling him every morning to chat. And, you know, she, she, was the, she was the light. She was like the glue. Kristen hopes justice for her sister will be served. The male driver was injured in the crash. Today, hospital staff say he's no longer a patient. We reached out to St. Louis County Attorney's Office to see when charges could be filed. They're waiting on more information from the BCA. Duluth police have started a new program hoping to drive down violent crimes and substance abuse. It's called the Safe Neighborhoods Project, and it comes as Duluth police have responded to more shootings already this year than in all of 2019. Katie McNellis was just hired to serve as the program's coordinator. Police say it's a grant-funded position. As the new coordinator, McNellis will create a board to address criminals who reoffend as they integrate back into society. McNellis comes with 12 years of EMT experience, is a Navy veteran, and has a bachelor's degree in sociology. Ahead in sports, big news regarding the UMD men's hockey team season. Details coming up right after the break. Want Columbia, North Face, or Carhartt? The only place to shop, Northwest Outlet. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. I guarantee you if your home just burned to the ground or you had a major accident, your first thing you're going to think about is not going to be, I just saved $500 on my auto and home insurance today. It's going to be, am I covered? At Vernon Insurance Agency, our first, second, and third goal is that you understand your coverage, there's no gaps in coverage, and your claims are covered when you have them. Call Vernon Insurance Agency today, 218-384-3970. Today, we help people. We help them reach higher. See things more clearly. Smile confidently. Bend the status quo. Even help them get a grip. Outpatient Surgery Excellence. Lake Walk Surgery Center. Real Steel. Find yours. Not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Pick up at over 9,000 local steel dealers. Find yours at steeldealers.com. This pandemic is like an earthquake that's shaken our lives and highlighted our challenges, like helping people and businesses recover while building a stronger and more just America. And that's why I'll work with anyone in either party to get things done in the Senate. One example, I've taken on the drug companies to make lower cost drugs like insulin available. I'm Tina Smith and I approve this message because I will move hell or high water to do what it takes to help my fellow Minnesotans. I support Pete Stauber because Pete Stauber has working men and women's backs. Pete Stauber has worked to get our economy reopened and bring jobs back to Minnesota. Pete doesn't care about politics. He cares about doing his job and creating jobs for us. Fighting for our jobs, fighting for our families, fighting for our way of life. This isn't about politics. This is about protecting jobs in Minnesota. Pete Stauber's there for us when the rubber meets the road. Pete Stauber for Congress. I'm Pete Stauber, and I approve this message. You work hard for your money and deserve to see it go the extra mile. Join us Wednesday mornings and hear from local experts on tips to better manage your finances in Eye on Money on Live Local CBS3. Brought to you by MPPL Financial. When President Trump made an appearance in Bemidji, we were there. Trump will be here in Bemidji. Crowds of people already. When Biden was giving his speech at Hermantown, we were there. When protests broke out, we were there. Today he said that Trump doesn't represent. When you wanted to have accurate info at the drop of a hat, we were there. For the best local campaign coverage, watch the local station. Live, local, CBS3. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live, local, CBS3. 
It's the middle of October, and in any other typical year, we would be a few series into the college hockey season. UMD men's and women's hockey would already have a few games under their belt and approaching the start of conference play. But it's October 16th of 2020, and we are still in a global pandemic. But the good news is we have a date to look forward to. As of today, UMD men's hockey will officially return to play on December 1st in one of the most unique fashions we have seen in collegiate athletics. UMD will play in a pod similar to the NHL and N NBA bubbles in order to limit travel to and from opponents. NCHC teams will spend most of December in Omaha, Nebraska, the designated site. We believe it's our best opportunity uh, to start the season successfully. Uh, knowing that all teams will be in a centralized location under a consistent set of protocols, including testing, and uh, that we can get the season started off to um, on, on a good foot. This morning before the news broke, we spoke with junior forward and co-captain Cole Kepke on how he and his teammates would feel about playing in a bubble scenario. Kepke and the rest of the dogs have been at practice for a few weeks now. It's been a weird feeling being two weeks into October and not having a single game. But in terms of when and how, he's just ready to get back to it. We haven't quite talked about it as a team, really. I mean, we've seen a few things on social media mm -hmm. and just we've kind of talked about it like as the guys and I mean it would be a unique experience for sure not exactly how it would all work but just for us we're right now we're just like the thought of going somewhere and playing is would be awesome and it would definitely be a unique experience and if in the end if we get to play games we'll do whatever Finally, another edition of Red Zone Live coming up tonight. Some of the notable games featured include the Battle of the Be Unbeatens as Grand Rapids hosts Hermantown. Plus, in Cloquet, it's the Lumberjacks taking on the Hibbing Blue Jackets. Highlights from both of those games, plus all of Thursday's action coming up tonight at 10 right here on CBS3. Now, that will do it for sports. I'll send things back to you, Kristen and Tony. Thanks, Neil. We love Red Zone Live around looking here. Forward to so much night fun. Of Football. Also, tonight on the CBS 3 News at 10, Minnesota's $1.9 billion uh, bill includes some critical funding to keep two Northland prisons afloat for at least another year. Tonight, we're taking a deeper look into the Minnesota Department of Corrections plans on how to use the money efficiently. Okay, do you like Top Ramen? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Not, not very much, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, if you do, though, this may be the perfect job for you. Nissen, the maker of Top Ramen, is looking for a chief noodle officer. You'd get paid $10,000 to develop and test out new ramen noodle soup what? recipes. Okay, I think I can learn to like Top Ramen I like now. It all, yeah. <laughs> Plus, you'd get a 50 year supply of Top Ramen products. Okay, now I don't like it anymore. <laughs> if you post a picture and recipe of your own Top Ramen creation to social media for the chance to be selected, use the hashtag HowDoYouTopRamen. You have to act fast. Submissions are only being accepted through October 30th. I'd take that gig. Oh, yeah, I think I'd try it out. How do you put that yeah. on your resume? <laughs> <laughs> A noodle taster. <laughs> Top ramen aficionado. <laughs> well, Dave, you are watching some possible snow coming through the region overnight. Yeah, I think it's more than possible. It's pretty near likely. Let's All take right. a look at the seven-day forecast. Our snow chance for Saturday is 90%. It'll be heavier north of Duluth and lighter to the south. Maybe one to three inches possible for the iron ranges and then it goes away by Sunday it becomes partly cloudy and stays that way through Monday then our next chance for some flurry action comes by Tuesday. Alright, we'll see you at 10. Thanks for joining us.